So we have our first candidates coming forward for Douglas South. Now, I know you as HM Soul, but yes. I think for clarity's sake, what will be on, you know, when you go to the polls, will you be going on HM Soul or will you be going on your birth name? Mm. Or how are you going to deal with this? So I'm going to actually combine them. So it'll be Ian James, HM Clinton. So okay. in there. So that way people can see the HM. Fine. Yeah. Uh, before we start, you, you, you were on here doing the exclusive for me. You're going to go for the, the MLC. MLC, job. absolutely. I'm guessing you didn't get the backers? No, so I wasn't able to find the proposers or nominators with inside. Well, very disappointed. Uh, I, I watched this process from the very beginning. And when I first announced that I had an intention to stand for an MLC position, uh, the MHKs didn't actually support it. Uh, they felt that I was more inclined to being a, an MHK. And, and even yesterday, uh, what we saw was there was no real push from within side of that chamber uh, to back a different type of candidate. Okay. There were people of color, uh, and none of them were actually voted in either. So this is a very, I think, big step now for the Isle of Man to reconsider what it's going to do. We can park this and come back to it. Sure. Because obviously, don't take up time when we're going to talk about you and what <laughs> your policies are, because you're an sure. interesting chap. You, you certainly uh, get headlines. You get attraction, you certainly get yeah. clicks. <laughs> so over to you, what, what's your policy? What, you know, when you go to those doors, steps and you talk to people, can you sum up what your policy is going to be? The very big thing is the fact that I think that the Isle of Man has been run uh, like a small village instead of actually looking at itself in the international context as a country. And I feel that with the support of so many people from all over the world that live here, with individuals that have a passion, a huge young population, that the Isle of Man finally has the opportunity to rise to this very unique challenge and carve out a part in the world for itself. That's within the clean tech in, uh, industries and sectors about, you know, specifically around business, education, the, the healthcare and pharmaceutical uh, agencies as well. We have an opportunity here that's very unique, that's unlike any other place in the world, and the power is its size, is the fact that we do have an influential uh, category within the future and that's what I really want to push for on the island. Now, that's a, an amazing <laughs> overview, but a lot of people just worry about the bins being emptied, you know. 100%. I mean, how do you deal with that side of things? I, I'm going to actually go in with the team. Uh, I think that uh, Tinwold should actually have a, a more protocol system quite similar to maybe how the U.S. or Westminster does run things, where you actually have a team of people that are there to help, you know, uh, a Mrs. Miggins, so to say, mm. um, you know, with her, you know, with her uh, rubbish bin situation. Yeah. Uh, but then also, too, it's just being present within the community. I feel that the vast majority of individuals that live on the Isle of Man don't feel represented or supported. Uh, so back when I spoke about the MOC election, I said that there was no person under the age of 30, for instance. Uh, there was no person that was LGBTQ+. There was no person that was uh, non-British born. Uh, you so all, all these the, boxes, right? This, this is what I'm saying. It's the fact that it's about time someone that fit these categories ran for a position and not just gave voice. Uh, when, when I was uh, criticized uh, in the Keys uh, during the MLC election about wanting to give voice to these things, they were like, well, you know, person in LegCo doesn't have a voice. Uh, so mm -hmm. now they don't have that excuse uh, if I stand for Douglas South. Okay. But uh, so I want to hear <laughs> what people will why. The, I mean, cause you, it's great things, but, you know, a lot of people stand on they want to reduce the speed limit or they want more flights or they want, you know, yeah. Are you going to not bother with that sort of thing at all? You're no. looking at this big picture only. So. What, what are not, not a big, I, I believe that it's a, it's a macroscopic part that happens at a fractal level. Mm. I believe that people do want to know that they can afford to turn on their lights. They do want to know that there's a boat that actually brings food in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way, when they go to the store, there's actually food on the shelves. I mean, one of the things that I feel that we've seen through the wake of some, something like the coronavirus uh, pandemic, or even the situation of the United Kingdom's economy and how it influences the Isle of Man, is that we have to move to a place of independence. Uh, ah, and this is exactly we the go. thing that I'm going to be pushing for. How independent is independent? Well, I believe that this is going to be down to the people, but I think that at the end of the day, the Isle of Man has to consider and to re-identify uh, what its relationship is with the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are a self-governing crown dependency, um, but there's nothing to keep the Isle of Man from actually becoming something a little bit but different. But we've still got to use the pound. We've still got to, who, who your trade. Well, do, well, do yeah, we? I mean, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't do we have to use the yeah. pound? <laughs> uh, Our own I, money? or <laughs> I believe that with the stage of, of global politics at the moment and where things are going in the world is that we have a wonderful opportunity to reconsider all of these different things. Mm. But let's be perfectly clear. The by-election only has, what is it, about 16 months right. uh, you know, in office. So what can I actually do in yes. that 16 months? I can cause a ruckus. I can actually actually make this system a disruptor think, aren't you oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely i love it you just, you know? <laughs> most people would be going no 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 i'll just be quiet and get on with things oh but no that's not my type you're uh, gonna yeah, exactly <laughs> okay. they say not to rock the boat i'll probably sink it <laughs> <laughs> um 
are you going to be trouble or are you just oh, going to yeah, be? Oh, I mean, I'm trying to get gauge where you know what, what are you going to do. Okay, give me an idea. You get in. Yes. What would you do? Well, the scenario in its first instance is that I'm going to hold the keys to account. Someone has to unlock that chamber, and I feel that for the first time in history, someone's actually not going to have the mindset of trying to please the chief minister or other members of that chamber. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, people have not been represented uh, represented in this body, and that's the very first thing that I really want to do. Well, is, you, um, just be prepared to go on to committees, uh, onto boards, uh, yes. onto, you, and you would be prepared to, and you get an uplift for money you know, for that. Well, so well this is my other thing. Important. I'm going to forego the pension. I mean, I'm not even close to a pension age, uh, but I do believe that by by the time that I would actually become a you know a pensioner, there probably won't be anything that's there in that in that kitty, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't believe that that is a, is an appropriate thing. Uh, and I feel that this is one of the key reasons as to why you've always had an older population uh, only served by that chamber, mm. is the fact that they were only looking after themselves, and I'm going to hold them to account for it. Do you go into Timor? Do you follow it? Do you, I mean, like yes. let's, say, let's say the budget, for instance, would you have voted for that budget? I mean, do you know the ins and outs of it? No, I definitely wouldn't have voted for the budget. Ah. Absolutely not. And I, I do believe that the Speaker was right um, to actually go against it. Uh, I feel that there was a, an aspect of that which had nothing to do with the, the, with the reality of what they wanted to actually show in terms of what the Isle of Man was spending this on, um, and following Hansard, you know, completely, it, it is it, it gives it gives reason and, and concern for worry. Um, I do think that uh, for the speaker to actually raise that up, he would not have done it, uh, you know, lightly. Uh, so I, I do trust and I had confidence in in that zone of, of having a second read through and trying to figure out what was going on there. And if this doesn't work out for you, you still determined to keep going? I mean, oh, yeah, I'm going to do you have a running. party? I mean, are you looking at a party so, politics rather than just individual you, HM Sol? Well, this is it. I, I, I wanted to be the first person to kind of, you know, start it off. And I believe that, you know, being an individual that can inspire other people like, you know, like myself or, you know, that have never been represented before in the Keys is, is where it begins. Uh, and I want the party to be born out of those values and getting a, a solid win first and then developing it. Have you got a party now? I mean, you're going on, will you be going in on no, a not, party no, no, to no, get it all? No, not this yet. Is you as yep. independent. Me as an independent and then developing the party later on for the 2021 election. And is MLC be part of that idea now? Oh, yeah. oh no, well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, you know, I do believe that there should be a massive reform of both the House of Keys and uh, the Legislative Council. And I believe I'm the candidate that's actually going to get that done. Right, so you're knocking these doors. I just want mm. to be clear, you know, you're talking to me now. Yes. So, you know, so what is your, give it to me, exactly how are you going to elect, get elected? Well, at the end of the day, um, I, I would walk up to a person, most of the people I would already know in Douglas South. I mean, they're you know friends of Farm Hill. And oh, you, do you live in that area, by the way? No, so I'm, I'm actually still, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm the boundary of like oh. Douglas East, I right. believe, because okay. uh, whether they changed it in the last election slightly, yeah. uh, but I'm quite often in Douglas South because we have a lot of friends there. So uh, it's one of the key things that if I'm speaking to a lot of those people, they'll know me as HM. Their friend has always been a champion for the things that they needed, whether it was for environment, whether it was for young people, whether it was for anything to do with the future. I know a lot of my ideas for some people have been a bit eccentric, uh, but I've, I believe that the Isle of Man needs you a visionary. You haven't part that, have you? The egg and all Gosh, no. No, no, no. Why, why would we? I don't... <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're so left field. It's, it's like... You know, you'll, you'll stand out. I mean, you'll, you know that. Isn't that, isn't that part, of the, totally. part of the process? I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I sh I'm, I'm impartial <laughs> this, I think. But go, go on. So anything else you want to say you know, to, to the potential voters of Douglas South who are watching this now? How, yes. how, anything you want to say to them? You'll finally have a champion. Mm. I feel that this is the thing that they've been missing. Uh, having a person that's able to stand up every single time that there's a Tinwald hearing, uh, that will be able to push for the reforms that they're looking for, that's able to be an encourager and also very present. And that's what I'm going to make myself, very present to the people that are there. Not only just listening to what it is that they feel is important, but how to lift up the standards of, of our home uh, in Douglas South. Did mention the castle only once in that. <laughs> Although it's Douglas East, it's such, isn't it? I mean, you've still got things in, in, in a lot of fingers and a lot of pies, I'm This guessing. is it, yeah. But my main focus right now is the island. It's looking at, you know, Douglas South as well as being a predominant place that everyone uh, from the Isle of Man essentially uses. I mean, you have the NSC there, you have, you know, major roadways that are there, football clubs, things like that, which are going to be very important for culture and, and aspects of the island. And finally, if you got in, which department would you like to be involved in? Anything particularly that takes your, your, your at this mind. particular moment, I'm not going to make that type of choice. Uh, 
personally, I love the concept of being able to go in as an educator, because um, I am a, I'll, I'll be the only scientist um, in government as well at the moment. Um, but you know, being an educator as well as a policy reformer right. and an activist, that's uh, going to be the key thing. Just to literally finish with, how do yeah. people get hold of you? They want more information. Have you got websites or, or perspectives or what? So, so what? So what I'll have is um, the, the Facebook uh, link for people to get in contact with me through there, and uh, the campaign page will be up. So I'm looking forward to whenever the uh, election is announced. Uh, be looking for me on the ticket.